Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. So my name is Claudio Rivera, and today we have the next uh, podcast on Bottom Line, and we have an excellent guest, Ilse Grasse, who has who is our uh, alumnus from 2013. So you finished yeah. the MBA in 2013. Actually, Ilse, I remember that you were part of the first group, I think I taught yes. in Riga Business School, right? Yeah. So in the personal career development, yeah. And Ilse is the CEO of Moller Baltic and is board member of the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce and also has a very interesting project. It's not a business project in a way, that is a book called At Slegas, Keys probably in English. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the same name. Uh, that is it com it it makes a display of the main milestone historical mi milestone of the history of Latvia in the last hundred years. Probably you will say something about this book because I guess yeah, it's close to your heart as well. So you, so you know you were part of the first group I taught in Rio Business School. I remember you as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> with good memories yes and i know that i i was defending my thesis when i was pregnant so uh with my first child so i know okay. it was on 2014 spring when uh, he was born and uh, i was with my already belly back then in summer so uh, i have good memories of the school because i graduated and then i did my next uh, next responsibilities in my life so it was so after graduation in Riga business school so you took i your, had a, you I became had my the first, CEO uh, at that moment no, actually, I had my first son. Your first son, that is, but, okay. <laughs> that is even more the important. The your son, yeah. The bunch. <laughs> yes, and uh, I yeah. uh, was uh, already working at the, the company Moller Baltic Import, mm -hmm. and this is an importer ship for Volkswagen and Audi uh, in Baltics, and I was uh, responsible for Audi uh, department and Audi uh, operations in Latvia and Lithuania, and uh, then in uh, 2018. I was offered uh, to lead uh, the company to be a managing director. Actually, if to go really precisely, then CEO is uh, in the board. He's Norwegian, mm -hmm. but I'm part of the board and I'm an MD for the company. And uh, yeah, and uh, then I was offered that job when my second child was in my belly. So uh, I always have these big events uh, when something else big is happening. Interesting coincidence. We are going to talk today about transition and change and how do you manage that? So you're sort of an expert because you go through life transition and business transition almost at once, right? So you finish mm -hmm. the career, the program here, and you became a mother. Mm. And then you became second time a mother, and then you are promoted. So you, you sort of have two transitions at once. How was that, managing that? Uh, no, definitely it gives some, uh, some stress level. <laughs> I would lie if I would say that everything goes uh, really easy. Um, I can uh, I can definitely say that that was a <laughs> actually also surprise to myself that a company offers uh, such a leader position to the lady who is pregnant. Okay. And I think that says a lot. Uh, I think if nowadays, uh, maybe then actually four years ago, we did not mention so much diversity and inclusion. Right. And DNI doesn't mean anymore only women and men. It mm. means pregnant woman. It means nationalities. It means color of your skin and different other also uh, things. So. Uh, now, when I look back, that's definitely a role model behavior from the from the employer because I was saying on that moment that guys, I have to tell you that I'm pregnant, and it was just a few days uh, since I knew it, so they were the second after my husband to know it, and that was quite weird because I was expecting them to say, "Oh, we didn't know. Now we know. So all right, we give you some time, rest, and 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 we choose somebody else." Okay. Uh, but they didn't. They said uh, we choose you. And uh, they said exactly the quote, or that moment CEO back then said to me, you know, it was a, one year in your child's life is so important. One year in our company's life, we will definitely find a replacement. We want you and you're welcome if you accept the offer. That was really, uh, you know, you say, uh, take your hat off. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's a good example uh, how to be DNI in life diversity and inclusion in actually real life so um, it's also a company that can manage to leave without you for one year so it should be, it should be very well managed and structured it can have a system to support that yes i think system and people 
because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because uh, when you asked me to come here and speak about leadership, I was thinking, what are those key topics yeah. and key things? And to me, people goes first everywhere. And my company says the same about the strategy. And we have strategy called uh, Dare to Move. And we say people are the first. And uh, I was uh, I was then um, covered by a CFO and uh, she did everything fantastically. She did what the process uh, requested to and uh, very strong management team. And so it's all about people. You know, it's uh, we don't do things alone. Who is your role model as a leader? So I mean, you went through different leadership positions and um, you have been hand handling more and more responsibility. Is someone that is sort of your benchmark? in dealing with people, in dealing with organization, in dealing with negotiation. So he's someone that is sort of your example that you are looking after. I have, um, I have different people who I, mm -hmm. who I like to look at um, and learn bits of it. So for example, my grandmother, she passed away last year okay. uh, this time and I really miss her, but I think she has taught me a lot about how important it is to, to work and to do things. And uh, maybe that uh, to take responsibilities on what you do, I think is definitely staying inside me from her. Uh, it was a very strong uh, impact. If I look at, at leaders, maybe in automotive world, I could definitely say that I choose to follow the ones who are brave and active. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely <clears throat> like the way our current CEO of Muller Group internationally in Norway is leading the, the company. I think our strategy document is uh, actually live. It's no bullshit. I'm sorry for French, but it's it's Very actually good. living organism, at least in my company. And, and that's that's really good. But it's thanks to him. So I, I really like the way he steers it. Um, and of course, uh, I have some people which are so-called unreachable, but where I look and follow and, and so on. I, I really like this. Um, you definitely know the uh, strategist uh, Patrick Lencioni. Mm -hmm. He's one of the guys I, I, I kind of follow when you speak about team leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, the same very well-known uh, Franklin Covey. I, I, we actually did all my organization. We did the seven habits mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. and um, we did it to everyone. So as I say right. to my colleagues, we're now 100% seven habits certified. And you see the impact in the culture? You see the impact? I see in the, the impact. The, yeah. I see the language we share. Right. I see that uh, we can speak about things we can influence right. and about things we cannot influence. Right. I think a lot of or influence, uh, yeah. we can say, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can, we can, you know, speak differently and evaluate, especially once we go to, you know, when, when some discussions or dialogues are really hectic and intense, mm -hmm. After that, to go in that and discuss why that happened this way or what can we do better or what can we do different. And that helps a lot when you have this seven habits tool. So mm -hmm. uh, I find it very useful. Very happy that you touch, uh, you touch many important things there. One is the importance of your ra grandmother. Mm -hmm. In my, my research, when I wrote my doctoral dissertation, part of my research was in Central America mm -hmm. and we studied the context, the family context of 3,000 young people. And, uh, and we saw the impact of parents on the leadership capacity of the young people of the mm -hmm. person. It's, it's huge mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's a very close role model. And, but regarding the last part, the importance of the language. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, sometimes we don't understand how powerful are our words. Because they touch the emotions of people, mm -hmm. right? They touch the, the way how they, and, 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 and when, when people get into proper trainings, that also help them. The way how they speak, how they, the narrative, the stories, and how they control their emotions. Fantastic. You said about the strategy, that the strategy is not something that is just in paper. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat yeah. it. But, but, <laughs> So it's, it's simple, it's, it's something that is easy to communicate to everybody, or is, you, know, you have a, ham, a big book and, uh, and it's hard to follow with hundreds of KPIs, or well, how, it, how it is that it becomes so lively for you? It's not a first strategy I work with. Okay. So if I would say, what is the difference or mm -hmm. why do I think it's better? It's maybe because as also our uh, CEO says, uh, it's a compass. Okay. It's not a definition. Okay. And it can be adopted to your regional needs. 
because we are uh, we are fine markets, uh, Norway, Sweden, and all three Baltic states. We are different organizations. I am the leader of Imposer. We also have here Moller Auto, which is a retail, and we have different, uh, let's say, tasks and roles and and so on. And uh, it basically, so the highlight or the name of it is there to move. And then below it, you have people, you have, for example, future, you have, for example, customer experience, you have different pillars where you can put inside your priorities. Okay. But it does give the framework. It does give the frame, uh, the focus, the compass. And actually I, I cascade it down to everybody in my company. Their task in the end of a year is to define next year. Mm -hmm. In between third sales, we're looking back, how did we succeed with some priorities, this, and it's very easy to use. Okay. And when you say, okay, what do you guys like work for? What is your company's um, main, uh, main direction? Then, you know, it's there to move. We want to be ambitious. We want to think, think ahead. We want to move things, you know, by doing these concrete uh, pillars. And, and uh, as I said, it's not the first strategy I work with. And that's why I feel it's really work in progress. If that's correct way to yeah. say well, it, like... well, that's that's why I, I I understand why you say that it's not just a formality because yeah. sometimes we get so much into the detail that people end up doing things just to have the check. You know, I have but done it. what yeah. I think is important here mm. is the role of a leader, the role of my CEO in Norway, the role of me in my company, the role of my management team to the departments because. Uh, if we will not make sure that it's being reminded, that it's being there, that we do those meetings together, that we actually do find time to sit down and reflect, it's not going to happen. So it's not that the document works itself. It's like a combination of the right framework plus uh, time spent purposely on that from the management uh, that you team. are giving the me message that you believe in the strategy. I right? believe, and it's in some yeah. way my, yes. my request to my management team that mm. you must work with this because that is part of our DNA and we must follow those steps. And that's the only way you can follow it up. Otherwise, like you say, you're so busy and you just get into operational issues and uh, yeah, but you lose the, the compass, the direction. It's very interesting. We are getting <clears throat> into the core aspect that in, you know, leadership is abroad. So today we are going to get leading transition and leading in crisis. And one of the things you lose when you are in the middle of a crisis or transitions is the direction. It's very difficult to see actually what's the, and, and what's the, what is going to happen next because you are like in the fog, right? So mm -hmm. you're, when sometimes we cross the bridge here over the Dauga and it's full of fog, so you see nothing there, right? And that's the role of the leader, one of the roles, key roles of the leader that is to actually give clarity when it's confusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was, what was your most difficult transition? If you if you if you look at the, your last year, most difficult change or the one that you will after ten years probably you will remember. And this one was a special one. I mean, um, I was thinking, and I am thinking, I'm pretty confident that I'm not unique because it was COVID. Mm. It was in my personal, professional moments. Uh, it was transition to COVID. Maybe to me, especially hard because my private life went really bad a year before. Mm -hmm. But to me, having that actually also kind of put me back on track and said, okay, now you got to focus and you have to really like go through this in some way. But everyone was very, very confused. Uh, that requested us to change totally the communication, the way of communication, uh, the way of how we look at uh, risk analysis, uh, the way how we actually perform budgeting when you do budgeting in uh, the sequence. I mean, in a situation where you don't know nothing, when you are scared in some way, all of you, because you don't know where it leads. Uh, so very high uncertainty in all chain levels, because we in automotive world, we have quite long chain. Right. And usually, usually in my 20 years in cars, we have crisis in one of the chain moments or in two, maybe, or like, you know, it's not in all. And this time it was so unique because it was in all. It was the in whole a, thing was disrupted. The whole thing was disrupted. Exactly. Right. And everyone was in the same situation. I think that that's why I say I'm not unique. It was to all the industries. But 
we have so many suppliers back in China which are doing the manufacturing. Then we have manufacturers, three different ones in Hanover, in Kassel, in uh, Ingolstadt, in Wolfsburg. We have so many big markets we're responsible for. We have China effect to Europe. We have like everything, everything. Then it comes to Europe. Then in Europe, we don't know when we're going to get production. Then it comes to Baltic, Norway. Norway, again, is different as Baltic, but still. And then it's Baltic markets. And then it's, you know, so it was really, really interesting that in all chain, uh, it was disrupted. And uh, my approach in this situation was actually, I decided I will communicate rather more than less. And that was the thing I did. I remember I was really tired working online all the time. I was doing those night videos to my employees at some moments, even daily, and just sending those selfie videos and saying, okay, guys, today we did this and that. And I was explaining what did we do with a board, what kind of topics we put on a table. Because my point was, I don't know what's going to happen. The only thing I know is Did you that. say that? Yeah. Because, and, and this is a good question, because I wasn't sure that it's okay to say. And that's what I have learned now, that vulnerability is a huge asset of a leader. And I think there but is... But everyone agree on that, right? Because I was going to say, there is still a question, <laughs> is that a strength or is that a weakness? Mm -hmm. I've proved on my own skin it's a strength, and I read a lot of research which says mm -hmm. it's a strength. Mm -hmm. There are two ways of vulnerability. One way mm -hmm. is that I just say, hey, Claudio, I can't do this thing. Can you help me? Right. And it's with not many emotions. But when I really go deep and when I really say I'm in trouble, that's when I get your trust. Mm -hmm. And that's when you follow me. And I think the leader who says, guys, I'm in trouble. I'm in deep shit. I don't know what to do. I'm going to and give you information, but I don't know if we're going to fire, if we're going to hire, if we're going to have money, not have money. I'm just doing my best now, but guys, we do have work, and this is what I expect from you. Uh, rather than say, I know everything, mm -hmm. and I'll come back to you in two months. You know, you can choose which one you would follow. And uh, so that's my definite learning point also when we now experienced uh, war in Ukraine, because that right. was the next process right. when I felt the same. Right. When I had, uh, like all of us also had uh, crying people and, and con like confused people. People and, making and plans to leave Riga. I people mean, making doing, plans doing to some, leave, yeah. uh, people mm. going into Zemesarze. Right. National Guards. Yeah. National Guards and, mm. and like doing things, uh, actually asking purpose of doing job. Come and saying to me, what's the purpose here in this office? What are we doing? And I said, you know what's the purpose? During the war, you need strong logistics. That's the purpose. <laughs> In case the big trouble comes, we are the ones delivering cars. So let's say that's the purpose, you know, and... Uh, do, you, do you spend time thinking on this messaging? Uh, it's a very strong message, very good, uh, both of them. So of course, the one you, uh, you, 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 you said on COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and this one. So do you, do you have in, your, in that routine of communication sometime where you sit on your own drinking coffee and thinking on this communication message you're going to deliver? Yes, there is another manager of mine who is uh, still also in our organization and he told me once that, you know, practice makes it perfect. Yeah. And that I've learned and before every stage time, if I might say so, or before any discussion with the message, especially so serious message, yes, I take time because some part of it is, is um, like uh, spontaneous and from my heart, but some part has to be thought out because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people you're speaking to. And, uh, and, and the, the, the thing I see is that we as employers, we need to give security, safety, all these feelings to them and... Uh, and of course, about communicating more rather than less, I, uh, I was thinking about because I was thinking, okay, how much can I say? How much? But that's another thing you can do. You can say that you cannot say. <laughs> and actually, people respect it. And, uh, and you can say that this area is something I can't uh, tell you, but that's what we're working on. Or, you know, so. Uh, what is safer than trust, right? So if they, we say the truth, so yeah. people start to trust us and they feel, okay, we can trust, right? Yeah, and, and trust and, and come with you and, and like, um, yeah, it's, it's very, it, I think for us it has been, for most of the leaders, it has been very, very hard time uh, last, uh, last three years. So 
I don't see myself unique. It's just my way of doing it. But it has been very, very hard. As as Eels, as a person, is the one that likes more smooth, you know, sort of stability, well planned, or or you you are of those that like more events and, and changes and curious, uh, not curiosity, I would say, but 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 experimenting a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So you are more of the type of that like to play with changes or be better to be more stable, right? So that you have a more routine, a more stability as a, in your personality. What's your... Mm. My answer would be that uh, I prefer that it's eventful. Okay. But with a planned approach. Okay. I with that amount of responsibilities and with that amount of diversity in my daily life, I must have a calendar, I must have a plan. Seven Habits also gave a great approach towards how do you plan your time. Mm -hmm. And I think this sit down before you have months starting is a great thing. And you define your most three topics for the months. It does give you focus and it does immediately prioritize. Mm -hmm. The same goes for a week. Uh, do I plan days so focused? No. I, I don't. Um, so you have the most important thing. But I do have the most important umbrellas. And what I recently started to do, I'm kind of liking it, is uh, I shared it with my management team, actually, because I, I say to them, this month, these are my three priorities. So in case you are interested. As a manager. As a... Yeah, uh, because they always support me in preparing something or, you know, preparing argumentation or preparing presentations. And they know that I will approach them. They know that this is a topic I'm interested in. Maybe if they have something else on their agenda, they know it's not my priority. Um, but there is a lot of problem-solving issues which we cannot plan. Well, that's why I'm asking, because... And I, these I, are I, coming Right. In. I imagine 12, I think it was 12th of March, uh, 2020, I guess, when the government decided to lock down everything. And 24 February, when yeah. it was the attack of, of Russia in Ukraine, right? The invasion. So, so, how did you feel at that moment? I mean, in those those moments that they were sort of because COVID, I think we started to see that as it was happening, but it was also short notice. I don't think mm. I, I, I don't. I mean, I. I've been participating in big meetings, even in the government office, mm -hmm. just few days before mm -hmm. I, I couldn't imagine even when colleagues started to think a, a, a little bit so it was what was your emotional reaction at that moment in those days i can say about both uh, events uh, war was maybe more personal mm -hmm. i was really thinking as mother Mm -hmm. My motherhood was much higher than my business leadership. Okay. I can definitely say that. And I think it's because we were speaking about our life security, mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, security in business processes. In COVID, it was different. It was rather about, okay, how do we manage the processes at work? So it was more really focused on the business. And that was a big difference. Um, also, of course, personal... <laughs> Management with children, like how do I work now if they're now all day at home? What happens with school, with kindergarten, you know, like these kind of questions. Uh, but mostly it was about, okay, we got to get together the teams which are responsible for steering the company. And we did it also thanks to my Norwegian colleagues and the board, very focused, very fast. And we, we made those uh, extra meetings uh, really early on, uh, on time and, and set them regularities. And, and that's when we kind of... You know, once mm -hmm. you start that, you, you get the things going. But of course, that, uh, that shock moment was there in, uh, in both, of, uh, both of those events. And I think you can't plan problem solving. You can't plan such events. And, uh, um, but as, you... as, as Seven yeah. Habits says, uh, there yeah. are things you can influence and there are things you cannot. So those which I can influence, I try to in some way plan. Yeah. Uh, and, and be, yeah, otherwise it's really going out of But hand. this is why some of these trainings and, and the Seven Habits are globally famous. It's very important. And they train you for the big moment as well. 
because these are mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. So we we get the habit of actually, okay, the circle of influence and circle of concern. So you start to think on that dimension. And you know, okay, I cannot influence it anymore. So I need to think on what I can influence. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's an intellectual habit mm -hmm. that actually you develop hopefully before the big crisis happen and then you are set for it, right? Yeah. So there is a set it because many times emotions in moments of transition can cloud rationality. Mm. I agree. And I think, uh, yes, like you say, cloud rationality. And that's when it's very important that we are actually playing those uh, different business scenarios. Uh, mm. I think we as a business world have been now trained to much more plan different business scenarios as we were before COVID. Of course, we were also making scenarios, but those contingency plans, those approaches to uh, crisis, low, high, super high, you know, all those options to be agile, to actually work on it on a regular basis, not just once a year, is what is new. And it's a great thing because companies now are much more stronger because we are we have those plans, we have those scenarios, we have those cost adjustments in case things happen here, here, here. We see that, we already face it, sense it, you know, and, and like you say, we can, we can then act accordingly. So that's definitely a good takeaway from the process. Now, when you, let's talk, for example, in the COVID crisis, I guess you needed to fire some people probably to downsize a little bit, or you need to take some decisions, very likely. I, so I guess many of those decisions, you really, you were not sure what's the, right? So, I mean, it's not business as usual. How do you take the decision in that moment when, when, when you are going through a, an emotional charge transition? You have several alternatives. You probably you have less than several. And you don't have a clear, even with all the business acumen you have and expertise you have and excellent corporate in the institution, the organization you have around you. But so how do you take that decision in the moment? So is, how do you re, how do you decide when you have not clear patterns there? I don't think you need crisis also not to have clear patterns. Okay. I think that's a daily mm. task in some way so to, how do you do? to actually feel it. And uh, I can definitely say that my approach is not to do it personally my own. It is together with the management team. It is together with the professionals in my company. Because if we had the downsizing, which is very, very sensitive topic, yes. uh, we do it like really think through. And uh, we base it on on facts and figures and arguments. And we make sure that even if we do it, then we make sure those people, we take care of them. We do it in a, in a kind of a respectful manner. Also, when we speak about compensation, or if we speak about this, the way we choose people, the way we do this. So, because in the end of the day, we are a business. We are working for the, for the bottom line in some way. So we have to keep that Absolutely. in mind. And, you can say that I'm just working on my emotions and I'm, I'm so sorry to fire people. I mean, then sorry, then you can't be a leader because everybody has to fire someone at some day. Right. But I think the way how you do this, this respectful way of doing it is the, is the way I focus most on. And uh, there is, a, uh, in HR, there is a lot of discussion about importance of exit interviews. Mm -hmm. And it's like your ex-boyfriends, you know, if you love them once, you can't hate them now if they haven't, you know, killed something in between. <laughs> okay. But it's it's about respecting that person because you did have a relationship some time ago. Mm -hmm. And if I can say to myself that I've been doing that in a respectful manner, then I think I do it. As have you regretted as any of those decisions that after you thought? <laughs> I have been sorry for those people because I have been feeling mm. that they're really, really good or, or like productive or, or good. but. Productive is the wrong thing because productive probably you then evaluate differently. But it has been, it has been a saying that it is a good, good, good person. You would probably not do this, but now there is a need to do that, uh, that the decision. And uh, yeah, to me, it's important that the way we exit relationship is in respectful manner, mm. both 
It's very interesting what you say that okay, a way of choosing alternatives is sharing the decision with other people. We use a word for that, I mean, with your management team. So you have the discussion. We call it collegiality. So the decision is taken in a collegial way. So mm -hmm. everyone together as a team. Did you have, do you have sometimes that moment where it seems that the opinion goes in a different di direction that you personally think it should go? And how do you deal at that moment? Because there is always mm -hmm. the ego there, right? So plain. Yeah, the there is ego and I call it distributed leadership or mm -hmm. the concept I've been following lately mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. the distributed leadership. And uh, the distributed uh, leadership basically says that uh, we need to get this genius out of everybody mm -hmm. in the in the in the whole. And uh, I am uh, concretely saying the ambition of the company or the strategy of the company or the direction of a company. That's where I find myself like the one who is saying this and giving the direction. And if we are waiting, like waiting, not as we weighing like in, uh, in benefits and like cons and pros and all the discussions and, uh, and things, uh, we can still come to an end decision. Mm -hmm. There will always be a list of cons and pros. And this doesn't mean that it's a total democracy because there is a moment, there is a timeline or there is a moment or there is a money involved where we just can't. For example, someone suggests an idea, but it costs more. Mm -hmm. Or someone suggests an idea, but it takes more time. Or someone suggests an idea and it's uh, actually not uh, confirmed by the group. In those moments, I come in and I say, no, it's impossible. Or no, we can't do this. We have to do it in this framework. And I think then we are... And that, that's my way of leading maybe the decision. So you are getting, you are trying that the decision emerge. Yes, it kind of comes so from us. So it emerge a little bit and then when the, it is stuck, then you get in, right? Yes, and I, I want us to be committed because I think the mm. biggest trouble is when we make decisions mm. where we're not committed. Yeah. And why it's trouble? Because when the, when the problem starts, then somebody says, I don't know, I didn't decide it. And to me, it's important that we in that room believe all in it, even though if you maybe disagree. But if you disagree, you say your points. I tell you, or that actually, it's not just me who sometimes says it's, it's more people mm -hmm. who say, no, we disagree and the reasons are like this and this. And then I say, yeah, but from company perspective, we currently have a focus on this, so we cannot actually go that direction. So that, and, and then at least I know that we go out of a room and all of us agree. And that's sometimes tricky because you have to ask it. You, you have to ask that question. So it's Do a lot of talking. Agree? Yeah, it's a lot Do of talking. Do we all agree? Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. are you guys with the decision before mm. we put that in a protocol, mm. as an example? And uh, mm. then you get this yes. And once you get the yes, that's a deal between us. And I believe in it uh, because uh, I don't believe in, uh, in, uh, in power of one. Well, it's very connected with the vulnerability. Yes. So I, I the, because I, I cannot do it alone because I cannot get along with everything on my own. So I need other people, and that has as a consequence this distributed leadership attitude, right? So that is looking that we lead together, right? It's more yeah. of a the leader become more of a coach in a way, right? So it's, uh, that would be, let's say. The, the great idea. compliment, <laughs> uh, which I maybe will okay. get in 10 years. Uh, yeah. But yes, that's probably where I see the leader difference. Uh, because to go in and say my opinion is pretty easy. Mm. My hierarchy title says it all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's why we have very, very high performance team as my management team. I mm. don't need to do that. And otherwise, why do we pay such salaries? <laughs> Why do we have them there? You know, so, and like you said about ego, I think it's not ego just for me, it's ego also for them. So that's where we need to, to get the power, most power out. So you, I, you, those crises, we, we, we talk a little bit about two of them. So the COVID and, and, and Ukrainian, the beginning of the Ukrainian war. And, uh, do you have any transition where, or any crisis that implied a loss for you that you really needed to come back? So that's, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh, so if you can share, of course, so what, what was that and 
how did you manage to come back? That you said, okay, there I felt my vulnerability. I needed to come back and, and, and to get together myself again and come back. No, I have just one in my life, obviously. So mm. it's my private mm -hmm. loss of my husband. And mm. uh, when you do it in this age and in this situation, there cannot be anything worse. Right. And, um, you know, now when I look at it back three years, it's still very uh, not long time ago. Yeah. So it's very still there. But, but I think one of the tickets I can give to people by going through that terrible, tragic experience is uh, really do step by step and not to expect that you can do more from yourself. Because I think step by step is the biggest thing you can do. And that's a learning to me also. I, when, when you have this big crisis or something, don't expect that you will exit like this with something huge. Right. You have those step by step and that step sometimes seems to be very small at that moment, but for the whole thing to move further, it's very, very important. And also to have and to decide what's your target and where do you want to go? Because my target was to survive, to take care of my kids, to right. be and to continue to be active and to be live, alive happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and happy and, and um, I mean to live my life. So it's like a big title, but that's right. the, how it was. And right. to do this, I have to do this small step and this small step and this small step. And of course, there is a big, uh, big trust into the environment of people around and there is a supportive power around and I think it's important in those moments to use it so we go actually back to the distributed leadership model because this is when you can uh, in my private personal life it was my friends and my family right. in my work case it is my management team or my board also as well uh, the one I can get support with so not to hold it where you are alone, but actually to share it and to be, uh, to be open about things uh, which are hard and the things which are currently, you know, you can't decide or you can't, can't resolve. Uh, so somehow we are still around the same keywords as you feel, but... but uh, yeah. No, but these, um, these are the clear, and we go also in the step-by-step step is you know, is again the circle of influence and circle of control, right? So is what can I control? I control what I am going to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, well, I'm going to do today, right? So you cannot control, reorganize your life at once. So it's mm -hmm. not going to happen, right? So, but, but is you can do the, and actually one, one of my, the research where I have participated was checking on, 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 sport people that went through very serious physical injuries, mm. right? So athletes or mm. that went through very serious physical injury and want to come back to competition. And, and, and one of the tactics they use is to put very humble, small uh, goals on yeah. their performance, you know, when they start to recover and yeah. they start all the recovery process, so they will not be fit again to win in one day or one mm. month or mm. even half a year, right? Mm. So it's very important that they have this big objective that is to come back to competition is split on very small goals, right? And uh, and it's very important the support, of course, they receive from their coaches and, and, and the people around them to, to go keeping them on, on, on the process. So we are coming back, but actually it's, mm. it's, these are the, the, the very essential, right, of the... Now, uh, sometimes people, when they go through this type of... Uh, uh, you seem to have gone through three big <laughs> transitions in the last mm. three years, actually, right? So, they they also make some fundamental questions about themselves and on and, and the, so and so w like your your employees have told you what are we doing in the office right mm, what's the purpose what is the purpose so those questions do you encourage in yourself those questions so those very fundamental questions at this moment or you <laughs> you say I, I I better keep the business going and for 
<laughs> I will leave no. those fundamental questions when the, I feel better. I like the quote which says, uh, do such kind of work that you don't need a vacation. Obviously, I do need a vacation to rest, right. and I'm one of the right. managers who does take all the vacation days out because I have two small kids, but right. uh, I love my job. It's just the way I do it. I love that job. It's, I like job. I like cars. I like those people. I like dynamics. It's very different. It's a lot of chains. It's a lot mm -hmm. of topics. And uh, after 20 years, uh, I'm not sure if I would like say that first priority is to change an industry. Not really. I really like the industry. And uh, so... And I want to work. I'm not a person who wants to sit at home. I have decided that, yes, I might probably retire early. That's one of my targets in the future. Become but a professor, probably. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's, that's my plan in, in about 10 to 15 years. So I have now very active uh, life ahead. And, uh, and uh, I like when my colleagues and my employees ask me, how are you? And then I'm always smiling and I say, I'm so glad you asked me because not often they ask. <laughs> And I'm like, do you really want to know? <laughs> and uh, I think it's really great when... So you stop and you answer that question? Yes, of course, because they don't ask often. But if they ask, uh, this morning I had a colleague asking, how am I doing? He's like, I saw you were so much traveling last month. And how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm, thanks for asking. I was like, you know, I'm tired, but it's good. And here and there. And sometimes to my surprise, people are just coming into my office. And I'm like, yes, what is it? And he's like, oh, no, I just thought I'm going to ask, how are you? I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. So these moments are, are really, really Refreshing, nice. Refreshing. Yeah? Um, yes, and, and it also makes a very good uh, colleagueship, or what's the name, like, uh, just a good relationship between people. And uh, uh, But, um, of course, I think everybody has that question. What's the purpose? As I said, uh, during those events like uh, Ukrainian war, when you look at what happens, it still hurts me really, really much. And I... And at that moment, of course, I think, should I put my energy into what I do or should I maybe put my energy into helping them? You know, it's just like a fundamental question more mm. rather than what do I want to do today, mm. you know, so, um, but... Um, it's interesting that yesterday, I, uh, on Monday, I opened a new class of personal career development that is a oh, course that we teach, but I don't teach it this summer. Okay. Because I don't have time now for, for that, unfortunately. But but I told the students when we started 10 years ago, it was a consequence of the revision of business schools in the world, what business schools do. And business schools have never really dealt in the past with personal matters of mm. the manager. So we were giving them finance and accounting and supply chain and operations in, the, in different ways. But at some moment when the financial crisis of 2008 triggered, so we, business school were asked to come and say, okay, guys, why are you in business? Because based on that answer, it will be, it will, uh, it will help you to understand how you have to deal with business, mm. right? Mm. And, uh, and it's interesting now that I just was with a professor from Harvard. He teaches one course that the name of the course is happiness. In the, in the Harvard Business School. Okay. And it's fully booked and with a queue of people. So the, the question of purpose, so suddenly we business schools mm. are starting to need to support our students and alumni as well on answering this type of question and helping to answer in, in the best way. We are getting to the end. So I have a last question. We, we talk a lot about the past. Yeah and the crisis, and it was a very interesting, very well-articulated discussion because we, we also are leaving to the audience very clear ideas on it's important to take it step by step, focus on what you can influence, leave aside what you cannot influence. So showing your vulnerability that people can really feel sort of the, the, the need to come to your help distributing leadership so that we share the responsibility, communicating with clarity and having clarity on our own during the crisis. Now, you, you say that after 10 years you want to retire. 15. <laughs> okay, 15 years, okay. Uh, 
is any transition, because I guess you being active all your life, you will want to uh, be active there as well. <laughs> is, is any transition you would like to do in your life? I mean, that's something that, okay, I would like to try this. I would like to move into this direction and experiment. <laughs> experiment. So I'm uh, 42 now. And uh, so 15 years, <laughs> calculate, <laughs> is when I would like to say that my most uh, active, focused, uh, business-oriented uh, life maybe goes to an end and I can still enjoy my life after. That's now my, my target. I really liked you say about this course happiness because I can add uh, on vulnerability. One of my traits I always say is also kindness. Mm -hmm. And I believe strongly in the fact that people will not remember your titles, but they will remember your kindness. And I think you can be kind but strong. And this is what actually I learned from the politician in New Zealand who was leaving the, her post. She said you can be kind but strong. You can be empathetic but decisive. And you can be positive but very concrete with directions and targets. And I totally follow that. Mental mentality or that kind of philosophy. And um, I'd like to study about it more. I'd like to test those hypotheses more on, uh, on my daily life, on actually my leadership style with my management team. I think uh, I do have a, uh, an ambition, and I'd say this to them, that I want us to be the high-performance team in all the levels, but always someone is leaving, someone is coming, so it's like a never-ending work in that way, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, I did the, I issued a book on uh, history of Latvia uh, last year, and uh, this made me feel that I, I like to do something for this country, like I like some part of my energy to dedicate to this country, and uh, we also did the supplement to the book, which is made for teachers for the schools to teach history from 9 to 12th grade and uh, I feel very positive in it because that's the way I can influence maybe how children learn more about this country. We translated it in English, we translated it in Russian, so we invite Russian speaking people to get to know more like Ukrainians or our friends Russians or English speaking. You speak perfect Latvian, but you definitely have friends yeah. who want to know where you live. So that's a good uh, book to give. And um, I think that I would love in the future also to give some part of my energy to this country. And I think we should do that. We should just do it because who else if not us? There are not so many foreigners as you who are coming and giving your energy to mm. our country. I think we should do it our own. So. Uh, but I have also very small plans that simply make my kids happy and, uh, nice. and, and you know, a stupid word, but balance, uh, balance a little bit the uh, work and, and family. Uh, the word kindness, I mean, we uh, happy that you use that word. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, the, the alpha male or the alpha female is, does it, that sometimes is the, is the representation of the type of leadership we we seek to have in, in business and in politics in social in social social life uh, so sometimes it doesn't play along kindness right so there mm. are at least we don't promote it or we don't we don't see it we don't see that with kindness you can have an impact so i think that's a huge area that where there is a lot of development and i tell you we see that the fact that there is there are there, there are more women in senior position in businesses. That has, has brought more kindness into businesses, and 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 also that that has impacted uh, in many ways. You know, many things that gender equality brings to the board, right? Mm -hmm. So the, but I think there is a lot to do at the level of researching that. But I would like to connect also with your book because the letting people think about their histories, getting them confirmed on their roots. And, um, and I think there is nothing more 
more important for authenticity that to be you know clear and especially in periods of transition and change like, who am i at this moment right so what is my authentic because when you have changes a lot of things are moving so what is the real the essential part that cannot change right mm -hmm. and that's in those moments it's very very important and honestly i think it's close it's, it's when if if we are very well enrooted in our character and values kindness come more easily right so it's, it's connected I think there is a connection mm -hmm. there between kindness and a strong character the character mm -hmm. that is strong not because he's aggressive mm -hmm. but because he's solid right so it's, mm -hmm. uh, somehow something has happened with our screen <laughs> but uh, it's not because the conversation is, 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 <laughs> is, is, is getting to an end but thank you so much it was fantastic conversation <laughs> is anything you. you would like to leave by the end uh, something a, a last thought that probably you haven't shared yet mm -hmm. i guess my my way of living or making decisions is uh is reflecting in uh, three words uh, you can change you can accept or you can leave and i know that in every situation you can use one of these words and it's important to to actually understand it that this means that in every situation we have a solution yeah we it's up to us it's up to you to decide do you want to change it do you want to exit this case or do you want to stay in this situation so but it's you who it's have up to, to us. decide it's, it's up to you personal responsibility yes, on that. yes. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. Thanks for invitation. Okay. And thank you for everyone to watch it.